Well, we are continuing our chronological study of the scriptures this morning in the book of Genesis. Today's scripture reading is Genesis chapter 27 and 28. I invite you to study the scriptures with me. And uh, the title for today's devotional is A Not-So-Happy Family. Now, a little background. We concluded our study of Genesis 26, and we found that Isaac, his wife Rebecca, and his family living in Gerar, a Philistine area of Canaan, which would have been south of today's Jerusalem. Now, he named the place in which he was staying Beersheba. Now, we already know that uh, Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah conceived twin sons, and we can assume that Isaac was probably 100 years old or more at the time that we come to Genesis 27. We notice in Genesis 26 and verse 34 that Esau, the older son, born at the same time. They were twins, he and Jacob. Uh, was 40 years old. Well, Genesis 26 verse 34 concluded with a a matter of heartache for Isaac and for Rebekah because we read that uh, Esau had taken two Hittite women uh, to be his wives. Now, these would have been uh, women from a heathen culture, uh, a lineage of idolaters. And so it's no surprise in Genesis 26 and verse 35 that we read that they were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah, speaking of Esau's heathen wives. Now, Genesis 27, I've given the title Esau the Carnal, Jacob the Conniver. You know, time marches on for us all. And in Genesis 27, it opens with a sad statement of fact. Isaac was old, his eyes were dim, so that he could not see. He was uh, uh, over a hundred years old, no doubt, at this time. And he was probably nearly blind, most likely because of cataracts caused by the desert sun and the sand. And so Isaac, realizing his age, had determined to put his household in order. And to prepare for his death, he called his oldest son Esau to come to him. Well, Esau comes and he says to his father, Behold, here I am. Genesis 27 and verse 1. Now, Isaac instructs Esau to take his bow, Esau being a hunter, go out into the field and take some venison, some deer. And stating that his purpose was this, to eat the venison once it was prepared, and then to bless Esau before he died, before Isaac died. Genesis 27 and verse 4. Now, the blessing of a father in ancient times carries a far greater meaning than it does today. In a real sense, Isaac was saying, son, go bring home some venison, cook it, prepare it, And I'm going to give you, my eldest son, my will and testament. In a true sense, he was passing the torch of leadership and was going to plan the dispensing or the disposing of his possessions. Well, Rebekah, Isaac's wife, overheard Isaac's instructions to Esau, and she realized that her husband's plans were contrary to, to God's will. Genesis 25 and verse 23, God had made it known that he had chosen Jacob the younger son and not Esau the older son to be the heir of the Abrahamic covenant of promises. Well, Rebecca decided to take matters into her own hands rather than trust the Lord to providentially work his will according to his divine purpose for Jacob, the second born son. Rebecca determined that she would deceive her husband Isaac. And so she readied Jacob to masquerade as his brother Esau. Now remember, Isaac is mostly blind. And so Rebekah prepared a meal for uh, Jacob to present to his father and masquerade as Esau, his brother. Now Isaac, as uh, Jacob brings the food and pretends to be Esau, Isaac had his doubts about the identity of Jacob. Nevertheless, he gave the blessing to Jacob and not for his oldest son Esau. Well, Esau returns 
from the hunt in uh, Genesis 27 and verses 30 and 32. And he comes to his father. But Isaac then realizes that he had been deceived. The Bible says that he physically trembled. Esau was overcome with grief. And he bewailed the loss of his father's blessing. Now the consequences of Jacob's scheming infuriated Esau. And Jacob had not only taken his birthright, that is the spiritual priesthood of the family that we saw in Genesis 25 and verse 33 and 34, but now he had taken Jacob or Esau's inheritance. Learning of Esau's threat to kill Jacob, Rebekah, his mother, appealed to Isaac and requested that Jacob would be sent away to her family in Haran, not only for his safety, but also to find a wife. Well, Genesis 28 finds Jacob on the run. Jacob, uh, Isaac realized that the blessing that he had given Jacob was irrevocable. And Isaac confirmed God's covenant blessing on his youngest son and commanded him to flee to Padanaram. Now, Padanaram was the geographical location from which Rebekah had come, his mother. In Padanaram, the house of Bethiel was found there. And so uh, Isaac uh, directed Jacob, go to your brother's your mother's brother, and find a wife there. Well, Jacob took flight from Beersheba to Bethel, literally running for his life, and he did not stop until he was some 40 miles away, arriving at a place that he would name Bethel. Physically, emotionally exhausted, Jacob went to sleep. And the Lord came to him in a vision that night, the vision of a ladder that reached from heaven to earth, and angels were ascending and descending upon this ladder. The Lord in that vision and in that dream confirmed to Jacob that he, Jacob, had been chosen by God and the promises of the Abrahamic covenant would pass through him to his heirs. God promised Jacob, I am with thee. I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. God promises, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Jacob awoke from his dream and the vision and he recognized that God was in that place that God had appeared to Abraham as he appeared to Isaac, and now he had confirmed his covenant promise to Jacob. Now Jacob feared God, and he revered the place where God had appeared to him. Jacob dedicated the place, and he called it Bethel, literally the house of God. Now, Jacob then dedicated himself to the Lord, and he promised, and I quote, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, the tenth was a tithe. Even before there was the law of Moses, men tithed a tenth to God. Now, we're going to notice in the next chapters in our study, God's wonderful work of grace as he takes Jacob, who up to this point has been a trickster, he's been a deceiver, and he will transform Jacob through trials and hardships to become a man whom God himself would call Israel, the man who had power with God. May you and I use the trials and troubles that come into our life to inspire us to humble ourselves before God that we might know God's power. God's on the throne. Jacob's on the run. But God has not forgotten his promises. The Lord bless you. I hope that I'll join you tomorrow as we continue our study in the book of Genesis. God bless. Bye-bye.